Let's now analyze the problem that we just worked through step by step. And let me overlay that with the mapping process. So what we did was we took the box and the star, the box being the answer that you're looking for, and the star being the point at which you start. And we can see that the grams of copper wire was given. That's the star. And where we're headed for is how many. That's the number of particles. And we talked about mapping going from one to the other. The analogy I want to draw here is with a flight path. So what we do is pretend it's like a airplane flight and you have different stopovers. We started at grams of copper, then we departed grams of copper, and we arrived moles of copper. That's our first leg. And then we departed moles of copper and derive number of particles, in this case, the particles being the atoms. So if we just use that analogy, let's now look at that flight path analogy again. What we did was we're trying to get to here, box from here, the star. And what we did was we left grams of copper and we arrived moles of copper. And then we departed moles of copper and derived number of atoms. So you can see the flight path, how that translates into dimensional analysis. If you will just use the following as an analogy, it might help you a lot. What you write in the top is where you are arriving, top being the numerator, and what you write in the bottom is where you depart. And with that, let's continue on to the next topic, which is pulling it all together. So, as a review, what we have just learned is the mapping when we go from grams to moles to number of particles, number of amys, for a given material. Now, when we couple that with a chemical equation, you will notice that a chemical equation is going to have more than one material in it. And that is to say, each material in a chemical reaction is going to have a number of moles, a number of grams, and a number of particles. And so what you just learned for an individual component applies for different components in a chemical equation. If there's two reactants and two products, then you will have one of these over each material in that chemical equation. So what we need to look at now is this section where we convert from a mole to a mole. Since we already know how to go up and down, we just reviewed that. Now we're going to know how to go across. And once we can do that, we can work the stoichiometry for any problem or any equation given. So first, let's look at the, the mole to mole. And the equation I want to illustrate this with is propane react with oxygen going to CO2 plus water. Of course, you recognize that from prior chapters as a combustion reaction, and you also would know how to balance that chemical equation. But now let's work, uh, let's focus on the stoichiometry portion of this. So let's analyze the question. Calculate the number of moles, we now know what our box is of oxygen, we know which material we're interested in, is reacting with this many moles, 4.3 moles of propane. So the two items we're interested in in this chemical reaction is a relationship between oxygen and propane. Now let me show you how you want to do that and the best way to do some of the organizational uh, organization as far as putting the information together. What I do is I picture my grid here. 
is always located such that the equation is in between the grams and moles. And in this particular case, I want to illustrate exactly what it is that I'm, that I'm doing in, in my mind's eye. I am taking this material above, uh, since it's propane, I know propane has a gram slot, it has a mole slot, and it has a number of particle slot or layer. Likewise, oxygen, I know it can be talked about in terms of grams, it can be talked about in terms of moles, or it can be talked about in number of particles, molecules. So if I remove that, I can now see in my mind's eye a grams layer, a moles layer, and a particles layer. And what I'm going to do is put a box in one of these and a star in the other, and then I'm just going to use my mapping technique. Oh, by the way, just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to go ahead and draw these other two because if you wanted to relate either one of the information for propane or oxygen to carbon dioxide or water, it would be a very, very simple matter of merely taking and realizing that either one of these also has grams and moles and particles level. And so what you could do at that point is realize no matter what you're calculating if you put a box on any of these and you put a star on any of these you should be able to navigate from one to the other using the mapping process so let's illustrate it with the problem at hand here and the the uh, my box and my star Let's go ahead and highlight those. So I'm interested in the number of moles of oxygen. So I'm going to focus on oh, I'm going to focus on this right here. Why? Because it's oxygen that I'm interested in and it's at the moles level. So that represents moles of oxygen. And where's my star? Oh, by the way, this is my box. So let me go ahead and draw that. Calculate the moles of oxygen. That is where I'm going to wind up at the end of the day. That's my box. And where's my star? It's at moles of propane. And so let me color that in. And that is my star. Okay, every time you want to set this up, and remember our formula, box equals star train track. Yes, box equals star. Now, I can see from mapping, I'm going to go f uh, where? From my star, my start, to my box. So I can see right now I'm going to start out here. I'm going to use one conversion factor because I only needed one arrow, and I'm going to wind up here. So now let's put some numbers into these and see what we come up with. So this is what I don't know. This is my unknown value here. Yes, that's my box. And my star here is 4.30. And now let's map that out. And I have that shown below for you. Right. So let's look that up. How many moles of O2, my box, do I get starting with? Where am I starting? 4.30 moles, notice I'm in the mole level, moles of propane. And now use the flight path. I have to go from propane to, from moles of propane to moles of oxygen. So what's my ratio there? In this case, you don't use molecular molar mass or atomic mass. That's what gets you from grams to moles. You don't use Avogadro's number. That's what converts moles to particles. But how do you relate the moles of one thing to moles of another thing in a chemical equation? That's why you learn to balance a chemical equation. What you use is the coefficients. So we know that you're going from moles of propane to moles of oxygen, but what does the equation say? One mole of propane gives five, requires five moles of oxygen. So there's your numbers. So you use the flight path to come up with the units, and you use the chemical equation to come up with the numbers.
So you're going to wind up with something that looks like this. And now you're going to, in your calculator, pick 4.3 times 5. Why times? Because 5 is in the numerator. And when you multiply that, that out, you're going to get 21.5 moles of O2. So now you know if you're doing a chemical calculation or if you're in the lab trying to do this, you now know that this number is no longer a question mark. You are going to get 21.5 moles of this material if you start out with 4.3 moles of that.